Hey guys, so I'm going to do an updated like all time favorites video products I can't live without video because I don't remember the last time that I filmed one of these videos. I've done favorites videos, you know, since I started my channel last year, so I've done like 12 of those videos. I've done a couple all time favorites, but I don't remember the last time I did an updated one. Um, and I know a couple products have jumped their way into my all time favorites, so I thought I would update you guys on it. Um, I have a lot of products, so I'm just going to get started. The first thing is an ironic thing. It's Cetaphil. This is the big version. It's about eight to ten dollars for the um, the larger version for sixteen fluid ounces. I get the one for normal to oily skin. I do not like the one for um, all skin types, which is this one. Which it also comes in a smaller bottle like this for less, a couple dollars less for eight fluid ounces. Um, if you just want to try it out, I'd really recommend getting the smaller version just because. It can be different for everyone. This one is amazing. The for normal to oily skin. It's one of my. All, it is my all-time favorite facial cleanser. Um, and the thing about this video that's going to be different is, are these are things that I couldn't like replace. If I, not like I couldn't go out and buy another one, but I couldn't replace with another brand or another product of that type. So if these all things were completely discontinued, which one of them is discontinued, which really sucks. Um, if they were all discontinued, I would literally not be able, I wouldn't know where to start to try and find a replacement for it. So, Cetaphil is one of those things. It's my favorite facial cleanser. It does have parabens in it and sulfates, right? Paraben? I'm looking. I know it has sulfate. Um, I don't know about paraben, but if your skin, I mean, my skin's really sensitive, like literally so sensitive to everything. Um, so it's bad, but this does not hurt my skin at all. It doesn't break me out at all. Obviously, it's a facial cleanser. The oily skin one is so much better. It doesn't lather. I wouldn't say it lathers, but it gives enough clean... Like this one, the reason why I have a problem with this one, because it feels like it doesn't do anything, the All Skin Types one. It feels like it's just, like, not doing anything, that I could do the same thing with just water. This one feels like I actually clean my face, because it does foam a teeny bit, not a lot, but a teeny bit, Great for the summertime when I have a little bit more of a shiny complexion because of the heat. Um, so if I get shiny during this video, it's because my room's really hot right now. Anyway, I'm going to stay on skincare just for the beginning of this video. I have a couple more things. The Clinique Acne Solutions Clarifying Lotion is the only thing that i found that controls my acne. I use it probably three to four times a week. Sorry if I get out of breath. I always get out of breath in videos. I don't know why. I'm just really excited to talk about these products. Um, but I use this about three to four times a week, alternating between this and the other product I'm going to show you next. And it's literally the only thing that controls my acne to an extent. I don't know if it's this necessarily doing the job. My hormones could have changed recently where I don't break out as much, but now I get maybe one to two pimples a month instead of 10 to 20. So that's an improvement, and I believe it was that product that does it. I haven't stopped using it because I'm deathly afraid that when I do, I'm going to start breaking out again. I alternate that with Witch Hazel, and Witch Hazel, I get a lot of questions on Witch Hazel. I'm probably going to do a separate video on this called What is Witch Hazel because I get that question all the time. It's an astringent that's found in nature. It's from the Witch Hazel plant, and then it's mixed with alcohol. Um, it's 14% alcohol, 86% Witch Hazel. What witch hazel exactly is, I'm not sure, I just know it's a plant. Um, this is mainly used for like insect bites, minor cuts, and scrapes, and it works really great on acne skin or sensitive skin. Um, so it's really great for that, and I love it. Um, I just put a little bit on a cotton swab. This bottle like this is about $2 at Walmart. Um, you can get it for $6 at CVS. It really depends where you go. Walmart's the cheapest place I found it. Can't live without it though. Obviously there's nothing like it. That I know of, so I wouldn't be able to replace that for sure. This, I'm just, I just rely on this so much, I don't know what I would do. I obviously need to get a backup because this one is running low, and I'm actually going shopping next weekend, so I'm going to be buying that or picking that up when I go. Last skincare product is my sunscreen. This is my all time favorite, and I don't know where I'd begin to look if this was ever like discontinued. It's the Neutrogena Dry Touch Sunblock in any SPF, it doesn't matter, I use all of them or have used all of them, but this is the best thing. It doesn't break me out at all. I don't know if it's necessarily good for my skin, but um, I've heard other people say it has like stuff in it and, you know, it just doesn't break me out, which is my main priority. It does its job. It keeps my dark spots 
at the same color and not getting darker, which is my high priority for using sunscreen because I do wear sunscreen every day. There's like a hair under my eye. I do use sunscreen every single day and this is the one that I reach for the most. I've used it for over a year and never had problems with it breaking me out. So that's great. So if this was ever like to be gone, I don't even know what sunscreen I'd use that was still good for my skin. The next thing is kind of a random thing and it is certain dry. This is a miracle worker. If you have hyperhidrosis, which is excessive sweating under the arms, which is what I have. I've had hyperhidrosis since I was in 8th grade. That's when I first started getting it. Um, this seriously saved my life. Like, I was crying when I realized how great it worked because I didn't have to go through the embarrassment of sweat stains and all that kind of stuff on my clothes, which is... I went into this, like, black phase where I'd only wear black, and then I went to, like, the not gothic phase, but, you know, that kind of phase where you just wear black. That was because that was the only color I could wear. I could never wear colored shirts because of the the sweat stains. So, Certain Dry literally <laughs> saved my life. This is the same one I've been using for the past year and a half, I'd say. I've been using it for such a long time. I really highly recommend it. It's not great for sensitive skin, but for me, because I have sensitive skin, this is why I say this, it's worth it for me to go through the misery of that deodorant. They do make a solid version, which is for sensitive skins. Um, if you read the top of it, it says sensitive skin. Um, I've tried the solid, does not work as well as the liquid. The liquid is the thing that is the magic. Um, the reaction I get with it is strange. It's painful itching. So if I, obviously if you scratch your skin too much, it's going to hurt. If I scratch my underarms too much, it hurts really bad. I can't put it back on. Like, that's why, what I do to make it so it's survivable, use it every other day. You shouldn't have to use it every day um, because it's so powerful that every other day will definitely keep you sweat free 100%. Um, but I kind of stop using it during the week, which is, you would think, when I would need it most. I build it up on the weekends, stop using it during the week, and then build it up again on the next weekend. And the weekend use that I use, um, it makes it last throughout the week. So I just have like a little system down. Another thing that really helps is after you put this on, it's going to be liquid. Um, I use another deodorant right on top, and that helps relieve it because it does shrink, it shrinks your sweat glands so they, nothing comes out. Um, so it really helps to soothe that with a regular deodorant. So that's what I do to prevent that sort of painfulness, itching kind of thing. Still get itchy. The itchiness is literally the most annoying thing. Anyone who knows me, like, that are close with me and know my problem makes fun of me all the time for my itching just because I literally itch my underarms all the time and they're like, yeah, I know. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. The next thing is a hair product. It is the Aussie 3 Minute Miracle. It is my favorite conditioner of all time. It's great. I don't even need deep conditioner. Well, I guess it's technically deep conditioner because it says deep conditioner on it, but... I don't even need like hair masks or anything like that. This keeps my hair so mo so moisturized and it's all wet. Flinging water everywhere. Um, keeps my hair so moisturized. I've purchased multiples of these. They it's an amazing conditioner for really cheap. It's like three dollars for this thing. Um, my favorite part of it, besides the product, is the packaging. You just squeeze it. That's all you do. Nothing else. It has like a little stopper in there, but you just squeeze it and it's amazing. I love the packaging so much. Really easy. Now. We're going to move on to beauty products. I know those are my essentials as far as health and they're under the beauty category, but you know what I mean? They're different than makeup. Those are mine. Um, the next thing is a perfume. I have a lot of perfumes that I love. Just because this is my all-time favorite doesn't mean that I don't love the other ones just the same. This is just, for sentimental reasons, my favorite. It's Mary Kay and it's called Happiness Embrace and it's discontinued. However, I get mine on eBay. This was $10 on eBay. It evokes so many memories for me. And it just brings me back to the time of my life. Not necessarily I was the most happiest or the most was going on or anything like that. Just when I smell it, it brings me back to that time. And if any of you have like memory invoking perfumes, you know what I mean. It's just, it's really great to smell this. And I wear it on the weekends when I just want to be with me and think about the past. This is a great one. When I meditate and everything, this is what I like to smell. It's an amazing scent. 
in general, it smells really good. But that's the perfume I wore back when I was 15, 16, so that's nice. I talk with my hands a lot. I'm sorry if this is annoying. Next thing is a lip balm. The Jack Black's lip balm is one of the only ones I found that really works. I really like the Soft Lips lip balm as well. This one's better. Um, there's a reason why it's so expensive. It's because it's so good. The Rosebud um, Strawberry Lip Balm is in my desk at work. Otherwise, that would be in this video too. These two lip balms are the only ones I found that genuinely help my lips. Drugstore lip balms, to me, always mess me up with my lips. I took one um, camping once. It just, it did nothing. Like, I would put it on and we had to put our everything in the bear locker because it was when I was in Yosemite. We had to put everything in the bear locker. I wasn't allowed to have lip balm in the tent because it was scented. So, just for safety reasons. So I had to put it in the, in the bear locker. And after like five minutes of me putting it on, I would need it again and we were already in bed and it sucked so much. I wasn't able to take like a good lip balm. I don't know why, I just thought that one was good. It was a Blistex medicated lip balm in case you're wondering. It just dried my lips out even worse, like it made them so much worse. I don't trust drugstore lip balms anymore. I only trust this one and the Rosebud Strawberry Lip Balm. I'm willing to pay the $8 for both of them to make my lips survive anything. They're an amazing lip balm. Now we're moving on to genuine makeup products. Um, eyelashes. I cannot survive without individuals. Like, obviously there's nothing like these, which is the point of this video. Individual lashes I wear on a daily basis. They really help me out. I have very fine, blonde, fair, thin, short lashes. Very not feminine. They're not feminine lashes at all. I like to wear individuals on a daily basis. I like the strip lashes for every so often on occasion. I do wear them. Um, today I have on like the corners of Forever 21 lashes. I just cut off and wore just those and they're really amazing too. Gives the effect of individuals. I never wear individuals all the way through. I always wear them just on the outer corner here. So individual lashes, definitely a must. Let's see. My Mineralized Skin Finish Natural by MAC isn't necessarily, I mean it's an all-time favorite, but obviously I'd be able to replace it if it were discontinued. There are other good face powders out there. This one is just my all-time favorite. I haven't really tried any other powders though, so this one I kind of threw in last minute. I don't know if it's genuinely like something I would die without, but it's definitely an awesome product, so that's that. Let's see, this next one is my number one most prized thing in this video, besides like the Certain Dry, obviously I couldn't live without that. My Cora's Manoi Oil Bronzer. This, I mean if you've been watching me since last year, since last summer when I started, you know how much I love this bronzer. I got this a long time ago, this is in Sun Glow Light, and it's the perfect bronzer for my skin tone. I don't know if I'd recommend it to every single person, it's not necessarily one of those products because it is... It just fits my skin so much, I don't know if it'll fit everyone's skin. It's definitely a warm, warm color. Hint of shimmer, but not a lot, but when you wear it like higher up on the cheek, it does give a little hint of shimmer on the cheekbone, which is nice. Um, but it just contours my cheek perfectly. Moving on, I'm going to talk about a few brushes that are my favorites. Uh, the first one I definitely could not live without, and I don't know of any other brush that's like this. I've never found a better foundation brush for me personally. It is the Sigma F80 brush. It is the Flat Top Synthetic Kabuki. It is amazing. I can't explain to you. It is really hard to clean because the fibers are so dense. You can see how dense they are. And it's still a little wet. I just washed them. But um, it's an amazing brush. It truly is. I mean, I mean, I don't even know how much this is. They sell it in the synthetic... Um, kit, like the synthetic base kit, which I really want, but I already have the F80, so that's the main feature of that kit, but I still want the other two brushes. Anyway, great foundation brush. It buffs it in so effortlessly. You don't even have to spend a lot of time buffing or blending. It just does all the work for you. The greatest brush for foundation I've ever tried. Um, this style of brush also works really great with powder. If you want to build a heavier coverage with your powder, whether it be a powder foundation or just a setting powder, this kind of brush works really great, but I use the um, Miss Taylor Kabuki from Sigma for that. Can't replace that brush though. Now the next one is my E25 from Sigma, and the reason why I have the full size, but they're very different. Um, it's the 217 style brush if you're going to compare it to MAC, but it is the perfect blending 
brush, applying brush, concealer brush, everything brush. It is flawless. It's my favorite um, makeup brush of all time. That's what it looks like. Now, this one is very different from the full size. I went and got, I went ahead and got the full size one of this because I have two of these little versions from ordering two kits from the past, and this was the free travel size gift. Um, and I use these to death. Like these are my all time most used brushes are these two um, things, and I use them for very different purposes, the two. Um, a lot of them are for shadows, but I'll use one with light shadows, one with dark shadows, that way I don't mix them up too much, because I don't do a lot of spot cleaning. Um, I went ahead and got the full size, like the big version, so I could have like a, a softer hand, I guess you would say, by holding it out here. With these, it doesn't offer you a lot of, it offers stability because you can hold it close to the ferrule, but the farther you hold it, the lighter it is, so... Anyway, I wanted it for that purpose. They're very different. I will show you. This one, to me, this full-size one, looks like a 224 brush. So, yeah, it looks more like a 224, like a blonde version than um, the normal size, you know, whatever, than this one. So, um, I still love it. I still use it, but it doesn't work quite as well because the bristles are a little bit longer than this one. This one's more stubby and that's what I like about it. Um, and I noticed that this one's not pinched and this one is. You can see. So that's not fair. Totally misleading. Um, but I love how this, the writing, is like holographic. I think that looks really cool. I don't know if any other brushes do that, but I just ordered this recently. I haven't gotten a recent anything from them really besides the Miss Taylor Kabuki. I didn't know they had holographic writing now, so that's pretty neat. The next thing is an eyeliner, and I was going to ask you guys to recommend me some because I haven't found anything better. I really want to take back my Makeup Forever Aqua Cream in black because it is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for an exact dupe of this, basically. I don't know why I just don't stick with this. Um, but this one smudges way too easily. It slides all around. I really want a a pencil that'll dry and set eventually and not move. This one is the Cora's Soft Eyeliner Pencil in Black. They also have a regular eyeliner pencil in black. Um, but I like the softer version a little bit better because it's easier to smudge. And what I use my eyeliners for, I hardly ever do top liner. The day I wear top liner is the day I mention that. But I normally do bottom liner only with neutral lids, like I said before, the reverse smoky eye, which I am doing a tutorial on now, since so many of you guys want to see that. Um, but I'll put this on the waterline, smudge it out with an angled brush, set it with black powder. I wanted to find a pencil where I can just smudge it and it'll stay, because this one I have to set. But it is the best pencil I've found for getting the color on the waterline. It doesn't stay too long because you have to set it. Um, but it gets it right on the waterline. It's really easy to smudge because it's a soft one. Um, I knew, I know, um, what is it, Maybelline that just came out with like a cream eyeliner. I really want to try that. It's in a pencil form too. But if you have any great holy grail eyeliners, high end, low end, whatever, that you love that stay, please let me know in the comments because I'm looking for a new one. Um, I don't know if they still continue to carry the soft eyeliner pencils. I'm going to research on Sephora and see if Cora still carries these. If they do, I'll probably just stick with it, but I like to find one that actually stays without me having to set it. Um, I'm going to save those for last. The next thing is my MAC palette. This is built by me. I might actually do a giveaway on this exact palette and give it away. So I might be doing a giveaway on this very soon. Maybe not very soon, but let me know if you guys would like to win this palette, this exact palette as is, because I could totally do a giveaway for you guys that way. I also have another giveaway coming up, and you'll be very excited. So, these eyeshadows are my top four MAC eyeshadows. Two mattes, one satin, one Velux pearl. Now, let me tell you. Satin taupe is obviously my favorite shade of all time. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, if you want, I'll go ahead and post swatches on my blog. I'll probably have pictures of everything that I talk about in this video on my blog, so if you want to check it out, please do, but these swatches will be on my blog if you're curious. Um, this is Satin Taupe Blanc Type, which is a matte white. Not white, but like a matte cream. It's actually a matte squared finished, which means it's really opaque. I'll show you. See how opaque that is. Really pretty. 
Um, that one's just really great. I'm wearing it all over today on the lid just by itself with um, RCP Cruises Cream Shadow underneath. I don't know what to do with this finger. Um, then I have Carbon from MAC. Love it. It's my favorite black shadow so far that I found. Um, almost. I think it's my second favorite actually, but I won't mention my number one in this video. It's irrelevant. Uh, this is Era from MAC, which is kind of underrated. It's like a perfect neutral brown for my skin tone. Works great as an all over lid color, transition color. I use it for everything. Looks beautiful under the lash line to give like a warmth to a smoky eye. It's mainly what I use it for, but all four of these together make the perfect eye. Can't even tell you. Love this palette. So let me know if you guys would want to win a palette like this. Because I can do a giveaway for you. Um, just going to wipe that off. Now the last thing, if you know me, are cream eyeshadows. Cream eyeshadows are literally my favorite beauty product ever over anything. I'm going to be doing a full cream shadow video once I make my cream shadow collection a little bit bigger. I have a lot of brands already um, and a lot of cream shadows. I have all but one of the MAC Paint Pots, which I'm getting this weekend. I know, I don't need MAC Paint Pots, but I can't help it. Um, the Paint Pots are my second favorite out of all of them. Number one is the Benefit Creases Cream Eyeshadows. They're amazing. They're my favorites out of all of them. These, the MAC Paint Pots have a drier formula. These are a creamier formula, and then what's even creamier than that are the Makeup Forever Aqua Creams. A little of that goes such a long way. So if you're looking for bang for your buck, the aqua creams are a really good way to go. They do last, however, after 14 hours, all of them crease, so just keep that in mind. Um, but eventually, without powder set on them, they will crease. They are a cream. Even if they're long-lasting, long-wearing, matte finish, whatever, they will crease. Anyway, my two favorites, if I had to pick two cream shadows that I could live on for the rest of my life and be happy with just the two, is MAC Groundwork Pink Pot which I believe I have swatches of it on my blog, which just looks like that. It's like a satin finish brown, very neutral brown, but it's a warm brown. Um, it's just absolutely beautiful it, for a really easy, easy, t um, what do you want to call it, defined eye. I love using this and doing the reverse eyeliner um, trick with it because it gives a nice neutral brown to the lid, so it looks like I did try on the eyelid, but didn't do a lot of effort at all, really. The next one, sorry if it, like, I'm using just artificial lighting right now, so, um, it's, like, dark, because it's dark outside. I know it's not dark here, but if it's, like, shadowy and all this kind of stuff, I apologize. Um, this one is Birthday Suit by Benefit, one of their creases cream eyeshadows. I love this color. It is my favorite cream shadow of all time. Not only is it my favorite formula, my favorite brand for cream eyeshadows, it's the best color I've ever found. It's like a taupe with shimmer, but it's it's beautiful. It's not too brown, it's not too gray. Right in between. Can't I haven't found anything like it at all. This is one of my all time holy grail products. I can't find it anywhere else like this kind of color, so that's perfection to me. So those are all my all time favorites. I know this is a really long video and I apologize, but Thumbs up if you made it to the end. Um, again, leave recommendations and tell me your favorite, all-time favorites. Can't live without products. I'd really love to hear them. But that's it I have for this video, so I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Bye.